This tutorial will teach you how to use laser settings and apply them to objects that you wish to mark. Now laser settings are combinations of specific parameters that you can adjust and they influence how the laser will affect the material. So different materials are going to prefer different settings in order to get the optimized mark. And likewise you can use uh, different combinations of settings on the same material and achieve different marks. If you have not uh, yet read through how the laser settings work and what we're talking about is is the basic principles behind them and the most common are power, frequency, and speed then I would recommend that you come to our website and I will show you where you can get this document on the website. It's just going to come to permanentmarking.com you're going to come over to services, go to downloads going to scroll down and under laser programming and marking downloads there is a laser settings guide. I will launch this for you. It'll launch in the browser. And you'll want to get this document and print it out. Now as I go through I'm just going to jump a few pages. But what you're going to see here is a good overview of the loop counter passes, power, frequency, speed. And then we also talk about fill in this. And here is a good explanation for each item laser power frequency and scan speed so again that is available on our website permanentmarking.com just go to downloads under downloads laser programming and marking and download the laser settings guide we're going to come back to our software now so understanding that you uh, have reviewed the laser parameters we're going to talk about them the marking parameters are all listed on the right side of your screen and this is where you're going to choose them and apply them to objects. At the top you have a pen listing, different color pens and we'll come to that in a moment. You have some color blocks here and then you have all of your adjustable parameters shown here. As you can see by default when you first start the software or open a new program or create a new object it is always going to use the default parameters. So to manipulate the settings to be able to adjust these we have to uncheck this box. Now the default parameters are set at general settings which will typically burn into any material uh, somewhat and that is speed of 200, power of 100, frequency of 20,000 Hertz with one pass. But that's not going to cut it when it comes to optimizing your marking so we're going to adjust these. So first let's come to the black pin up here I'm just going to select this. Now you can see over here on the screen we have two text objects that are already created and those are both black which means that they are going to follow this black pin this pin 0 which is our default pin and when we create a new object it is typically black in color so I'm going to uncheck this use default parameters and now you can see I can manipulate these different settings I've got loop count at 1 that's going to mark each object one time speed at 200 that means as it's marking and filling it's going to travel at a rate of 200 millimeters per second power at 100 percent which means that I'm using the full power of my laser whether that be 10 20 30 50 watt uh, so on and so forth frequency at 20 and this is in kilohertz so that means that it is at 20,000 Hertz now all of the Teichma lasers <clears throat> by default have a frequency range of 1000 to 200,000 Hertz and our 30 watt model has a range of 1000 to 1 million Hertz. Frequency is very important and again I uh, encourage you to make sure you read up on this in our laser uh, programming guide, our laser settings guide that uh, we list there on the website. Now we have some other settings as well. We have wave which is a selectable waveform that's only uh, applicable to our 30 watt customers and they will receive advanced training on that. We're not going to discuss that in this tutorial. We've also got some delays here that you can manipulate. Now the delays that Teichma provides to you 100, 100, 400 and 100 these are all delays that I recommend you stick with for all of your markings you're only going to want to change these delays if you have a very particular application where we're trying uh, to control the start and stop points of the laser uh, as the laser is uh, creating characters uh, or objects. 
for now you want to leave those alone however and stick with our basic settings these have been optimized uh, to give you uh, optimum marking quality and results for most marking that you're going to see we have CW down here this is to put the laser in constant waveform you don't want to apply this and it's actually not going to work uh, based on the way that our systems are programmed but it is an option for some customers that may need it again advanced training we've got a box here that you can click and it's going to open a pop-up and this is, gives you a uh, representation of your basically your speed and your frequency together and how that's going to affect the material you can see these circles here represent laser dots as the laser is marking the frequency uh, is is because it's pulsing excuse me is going to create uh, pieces of light and that's what these circles represent pieces of light hitting the material you can see at 20,200 where we're at now if we increase this speed those dots get spaced out further together so if we go at a faster rate of speed we need to increase our frequency to put the dots closer together now that's not an exact science so we really don't recommend using this as a, a way to set up your laser settings because it's not going to give you the right combination necessarily for the material but it's a good representation tool to understand how your speed and frequency will affect each other in your marking you can go ahead and cancel this so it doesn't take down here we've got a parameter library you can select uh, settings from the uh, laser parameter library I'm going to click that and you can see now we've got several choices in here so let's assume that I am marking these two text boxes and I'm marking them on let's say a stainless and I want to do an anneal mark okay the first thing it's going to tell me is that it what type of mark it is what type of material and I'm also going to get the recommended fill settings that I would want to use and you can see here we've got two fills one at 90 one at 270 and we're going to use 0 0.02 as our fill space that is a recommendation um, based on the type of mark and and because when we choose these settings it does not change the fill you will need to go ahead and change that it will however adjust the speed power frequency and loop count for you so this is a very handy uh, marking uh, parameter library that we provide to you so now we want to show you very quickly how to install this laser parameter library we'll go ahead and cancel this for now we will come back to it to install the parameter library I'm simply going to come back to our website on our website again we have the marking parameters library file I'm going to go ahead and download this and I'm going to save this to my desktop and you can see I've downloaded it before I'm just going to overwrite it it's going to download and it's done. Now that it's downloaded, I'm just going to come to my desktop. You can see it's right here listed as a zip file. I'm going to double click to extract and I'm just going to drag this out and put it on my desktop. Now within the computer environment or on your computer to install this library file to get those settings I just referenced, you're going to go to your C drive. If you're on a 64-bit uh, machine, you're going to go to program files x86 going to go down and you're going to find mini lays pro se you're going to go to a folder called param and you can see now here's where our marking library uh, marking parameter library file is stored I'm just going to drag this in it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite I'm going to move and replace this and now you can see I've installed my marking parameter library file now when you close your software and relaunch you would have this select parameter from library you would have this library uh, of different settings for different materials available and again that is available on our website very easy to install so again coming back if I want to do annealing I'm just going to choose this setting I'm going to click OK and now you can see my settings have changed two passes speed at 200 power at 50 frequency at 125 this is set up now to do an, a black annealed mark now let's say I want to make a black annealed mark with this object and on this object I want to do a burn so what I can do now is select a different pen and that's where these pins come into play this was my black pen but for my blue pen I want to set up a different set of parameters because I want each object to uh, look different on my material I'm going to click off you always want to click off of your object so that you have no object selected and I'm going to come over here to my blue pen now that I've selected my blue pen you can see it's still using the default parameters uncheck that 
I'm going to go back to my library and let's go to a metal burn mark. I'm going to click OK and now you can see for my blue pin I have different settings 100, 100 and 20,000. Likewise it, it suggested a fill for me. So the way I apply this now that I've set up my blue pin and I'll show you again my black pin is different. If you watch the settings here they will change between the two pins. If I go to my object that I want to mark with this blue pin and select it, I can now come back up here and click right click on my mouse and use apply to pick object. Now that I've done that, I've selected this object and applied this blue pin. This object is going to burn. This object likewise, as you can see, is going to follow the black pin settings. So it's going to anneal. So this is how we can apply different settings to different objects within the same marking file. And likewise we can go down uh, if we click off and go down through you can see that we can change all of these different pins. And there are a significant number of pins. So you can start setting custom colors once you get past 15 they're all black. Um, but the pin number is listed here and you can change those colors simply by double clicking on the object. Now you can see where you can choose different hues and pick a custom color for any object that you want to mark. I'm going to cancel that. So there's a lot of power here, a lot of capability. Likewise, if I wanted to change this color quickly, I can just simply click on my colors here and apply that. However, I do want to use my blue pen on that object. Now the other way that we can apply these pin colors is we can do it through our fill settings. So I'm going to show you that next. I'm going to come over here to my object uh, that is using the black pen and I'm going to come to my fill settings as you uh, should have already reviewed in a previous tutorial. When I launch this you can now see within this fill uh, settings that there is a pin number which we mentioned earlier. For each different fill, if we do multiple fills, we can now apply different pins. Now why is this important? It's important because it allows us to process an object on a piece of material with multiple settings in one single uh, marking cycle. And so what that means is uh, if we wanted to let's say do a deep engrave on a material I would use uh, one pin for my first fill and that pin would be programmed over here for deep engraving and I would likewise set up my fill. And let's say after the deep engraving cycle is done on the next pass I want to come in and I want to clean it up a little bit, polish the bottom, get some of the burn out of there. What I can do then is set a separate pin. Let's say that's our red pin, pin 2. Once I set that pin, I'm just going to change my fill parameters here and click OK on this object. You can now see that this object has got two pins applied. It's got a black pin and it's got a red pin. So that's going to process the black setting first and then likewise process the red pin. And that is how you apply multiple settings to one object. Again it is through our pin settings we can do multiple uh, passes. Now we can add a third and I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to leave it at point three so you can see it at 45 degrees and let's pick pin three which is green and apply that. If I were to zoom in on this object you can now see that I have my black pin, my red pin and my green pin all set on one object and you can see I also still have my blue pin set up over here. To manually change settings for example on this yellow pin which will undo default parameters you're just going to come in and click in here and you can type on your keyboard and hit enter that is going to apply different settings. So very easy very simple to understand but a lot of power in here really gives you a lot of choices uh, in your marking. That uh, concludes our pin and marking parameter settings and for more information again on how to optimize the settings I recommend coming to our website and downloading under services downloads laser programming and marking recommend downloading our laser settings guide which is going to give you all the settings you need along with fills and explain the different properties of the markings that you'll want to accomplish